everybody. Welcome to lab number three. Third lab in anatomy and physiology number one. This one is all about epithelial tissue. Simple and pseudostratified epithelia. Okay. You know from the lecture video that a tissue is a collection of cells with a common structure and function. You also know that if we're looking at tissues, we are using a microscope to create these pictures, and we are doing the study of histology. More stuff you know. There are four basic types of tissue. Epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous. Remember, epithelial tissue is a covering and a lining. Connective tissue connects things, supports, protects, and more. Muscle is all about movement. Nervous is about control and a whole lot more. We are doing epithelial tissue today. That is our plan. Okay? What we're looking at in this picture over here, this is some epithelial tissue from the kidney. What I want you to notice first is all of these purple circles. These are all nuclei. Nuclei are almost always going to appear purple. Don't forget that. Nuclei almost always appear purple. The cytoplasm around them is going to be a light pink. You can see this one cell. He's kind of like square-ish shaped right there. There he is. There's his cell membrane that my pointer is going over. And there's his nucleus right there. So what you'll notice also is there are a lot of cells that are looking similar. All these guys, all these neighbors basically look almost identical to one another. Because remember, tissues are collections of cells with a common structure. And of course, if your structure is similar, well, what always goes with structure, but function. Okay, let's get to work. We know that epithelial tissues are coverings and linings, all right? So what I have in this top picture here is some skin. This is some skin here. This is all skin. All this stuff is skin. This is the space that would be outside of the body. Well, so what's lining the body, this yellow bracketed region here, this tissue is epithelial tissue. Look at all the little purple dots. All those little purple dots are nuclei. We're not as zoomed in as we were on the previous picture. That's why they look smaller. So this is some epithelium doing that job of covering. All right, let's move down to this lower picture. This is a slice of the trachea. Remember the trachea, the windpipe in your neck? It's a tube. We've sliced this tube transversely, so we get a ring-shaped structure. This is the internal space of the trachea. A better word for the internal space in an organ is this word lumen right here. If you run a microscope, light would shine through any open space. The word lumen means light, like illuminate. So that open space is the lumen of the trachea. Now, lining this lumen, so right here, this is epithelial tissue. Notice the purple color right there. That purple color is because of the abundant nuclei. We're really zoomed out so we can't see the individual ones. Okay, an epithelium is going to be a covering or a lining. As such, it's going to be next to an external space or next to an internal space. Now, if I go back up to my epithelium up here, here it is, this yellow bracket. This is the epithelial tissue. There is a part of it right here that my, po that my pointer is on, that these three red arrows are pointing at. And then there's another part of the epithelial tissue down here that the green arrow is pointing on. Now, the part of the epithelium that is exposed to the space, whether it's a space outside the body or whether it's a, a space of a lumen, that part of the epithelium is called the 
apical surface, the part exposed to the space outside or exposed to the lumen. So the red arrows here are indicating the apical surface of this epithelium. If we jump down here, here's our space. So the red arrows are pointing directly at the apical surface. Now, opposite the apical surface. So this is my epithelial tissue. By the way, this is some connective tissue down here. It does look different, doesn't it? This bottom surface of the epithelial tissue, the one farther from the space, is called the basal surface, which kind of makes sense. All right. Let's do some more stuff. Okay. Because epithelial cells, epithelial tissue, are a covering and a lining, it makes sense. They gotta be slammed right into one another. If you're a covering, you're you're doing a job of protection. You can't have gaps between the cells. Cells are right next to each other. Like, I mean, if I look at this epithelium down here, so my yellow bracket is on an epithelium, look how all these cells are just smushed against one another. We can see all their beautiful nuclei. I'm going over their nuclei right there. We're zooming in on some skin up here. These are all skin cells. Look at the nucleus right there. Each of these circles is a nucleus. This is one skin cell right here. Cells are packed together. Now, here's the thing. Not only are cells packed together, but the cells are actually linked together really strongly. And there's these two protein-based ways that we link cells together. One's called desmosomes. All of these little line-looking things between the cells are right in here. So, like, look, this is, uh, let me undo that. I don't like that color. It's green. This is one cell right here that I'm kind of just outlining. Okay, you can see his nucleus. There's another cell right down here. These are skin cells. And in between them, you can see all these little lines in here. You can see them all over the place, over here too. And these are called desmosomes. And they anchor cells together really strongly, which makes sense because remember, this is skin. And skin has to protect you. It can't be falling apart. The other way that we might hook cells together is with these structures called tight junctions. Now, we're going to find tight junctions down here in between the cells in this small intestine. This is what we're looking at here. This is the small intestine. All of these cells, you can see all their individual purple oval nuclei, all of these cells would be linked together by tight junctions. If I drew a pair of cells here. So I'm going to draw a pair of epithelial cells from the small intestine. There's a nucleus. So the rectangular thing is the cell. There's a nucleus. Here's another cell right next door. The tight junctions are these proteins and they get in this whatever tiny little space in here. And what they do is they stop things from being able to sneak through the space in between the cells. You have tight junctions in your small intestine to prevent bad things from leaking. I mean, here's where the lumen is. Here's where the lumen is. That's, there we go. You don't want bad stuff. You don't want something bad to sneak through and get in this blood vessel. You stop it with tight junctions. Okay, so the moral of this slide here is that epithelial cells are packed together tightly and they're joined together in specialized ways, either for strength or to prevent things from passing through. All right. We are looking at more epithelial tissue here. 
doing some histology. There's a lumen right there. Here's a lot of cells. I'm in the cytoplasm. I'm putting dots in the cytoplasm of these cells. There we go. You can see the nuclei. I'm just pointing at one nucleus right there. Let me put a single dot on the nucleus. Boop, there it is. This is the apical surface of these cells because it's facing the lumen. Down here is the basal surface. And now what I want you to notice is that there is a supportive layer right next to the basal surface. I kind of covered it almost just because it's so things are so tight right there. But if you look right, right there, there's like a pinkish line. That pinkish line is this proteinaceous. Oops, I don't want an arrow. It's a proteinaceous, it's made of protein, layer that supports an epithelium. It's under the basal surface. It's called the basement membrane. That is another fundamental characteristic of epithelia. If you haven't noticed, we've been doing some characteristics of epithelia. Their coverings, their linings are next to a space. They have an apical and a basal surface. They're packed together, the cells. The cells are linked by tight junctions or desmosomes. And the cells are supported by a basement membrane. Oh, by the way, this picture we're looking at here, like this guy that I was just messing with, this is a little tiny tube in the kidney. And as you can see, he's got a ring shape right here. So he was sliced transversely. He was sliced transversely. We know that word. Yes, yes, we do. Okay. Another thing about epithelia. Epithelial tissues, like within the tissue itself, there are no blood vessels. Think about how you can scrape off a little bit of skin. You can scrape off. You can stick like a little pin underneath the top layers of your skin and not bleed. So epithelia are avascular. If you're a covering, being avascular makes sense. Now, you will have neighboring blood vessels. Like there's a bunch of neighboring blood vessels. I got some blue arrows on some. There's some other neighboring blood vessels here. But there are no blood vessels actually in the epithelial tissue. So they're avascular. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, we are done the basic characteristics of epithelial tissue. And now we got to talk about the different types and how we classify them. Okay. First, most basic thing we can do. We can call an epithelia simple or stratified. Look at this one on the left-hand side here. Look at the nuclei. Look at how there's basically one row of nuclei. That means there's one row of cells here. If it's a single row of cells, it is going to be a simple epithelium. Over here, my green bracket is on an epithelium. By the way, the one on the left is from the small intestine. The one on the right here is from the urinary bladder. When I look at this epithelium, here's my lumen. Lumen over here was right there. When I look at this epithelium, I don't see one row of nuclei. I got a bunch. One, two, three, four, and more. I got a lot of nuclei stacked. That means there's multiple rows of cells which means the epithelium is stratified. Okay, obviously, which of these would be better at protection? Single layer of cells or a multi-layered structure? Definitely stratified. Stratified is much better for protection. Simple is much better for exchange. Just a good thing to know, good thing to remember. Okay. Let's not dawdle. Let's keep going. We can also classify epithelia by the shape of their apical cells. Let's do that. Okay. I'm over here on the left. 
Let me show you the lumen. Let's get a new color. Let's go red. No, let's not go red. Let's go green. There's the lumen right there. Lumen right there. It's a small lumen. And I put this double black arrow on the epithelial cell lining that lumen, that space. Just one cell right there. So we're, it's a simple epithelium. What I want you to notice is how smashed, how flat that nucleus is. If the nucleus is flat, the cell is flat. Look at that nucleus down there. Flat. Look at that nucleus right there. Flat. Flat nucleus, flat cell. Flat cells are called squamous cells. So epithelia can be squamous if they're apical cells or flat. All right, move to the middle. By the way, picture on the left here is a kidney. This middle picture is your thyroid gland, which is in your cervical region. There are some structures in here that have lumens. There's a lumen. So my black arrow is on an epithelium. One row of cells, one row of cells in this ring here. And so it's a simple epithelium. But look at the shape of the nuclei. They're roundish, squarish, more roundish than squarish. If you have round-ish nuclei, so if you have a round nucleus, you will probably have a round or a square cell. And we have an epithelial type called cuboidal. So our first epithelium was simple and squamous. Our sex, excuse my cursive right there. Our second is also simple and it is cuboidal. I'm just going to write cube. Last situation. I have another epithelium on the right here. This is from the small intestine. There's the lumen. One row of cells. My nuclei are now more oval. My cells are more elongated. When you have elongated rectangularesque cells, you are in the presence of some columnar epithelium. So this guy down here is simple and it is columnar. So we classify epithelia based on the number of cells, number of layers of cells they have, and it was simple or stratified. And then we look at the apical cells and we talk about their shape and we get either squamous, cuboidal, or columnar. So notice that I labeled three epithelia here. I used two words to do each of them. Simple squamous, simple because it's one row, squamous because they're flat. Then I had simple cuboidal in the middle, simple because it's one row, cuboidal because they're roundish, squarish. And then I finished with simple columnar on the right. Okay. Awesome. Let's keep going. This is lung tissue down here. This is lung tissue. It's pretty incredible looking. Lung tissue is mostly space. So most of the most of what you're looking at here is space, okay? So lumen, 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 lumen. All right. There's in fact all these little air pockets, little sacs, like this little C. I'm just gonna outline him right here. That little C is a little air sac. He is called an alveolus. Now, every alveolus has a lumen. The word alveolus is in the lumen right there. So every alveolus has simple squamous epithelium. And you can see it's simple squamous. I mean, look at it. Look how skinny it is. Look how skinny this is. Flat nuclei, super skinny. That's simple squamous epithelium. Now, what is going on here? This is where gas exchange is going to take a, take place. 
I know that's not how you spell exchange. I don't know why I did it like that. That's where gas exchange takes place. Um, gas exchange, well, you don't want a thick epithelium that the gases have to diffuse through. You want a skinny one. So simple squamous fits the bill. Awesome. So we see simple squamous epithelia in the lungs, in the alveoli. The structure matches the function because its thinness facilitates exchange. If I ever ask you, how does the structure match the function? You've got to tell me a little bit about the structure and a little bit about the function. Three words. Thinness facilitates exchange. Boom, boom. Done. Perfect. All right. Let's keep going. We just keep moving. That's what we do. Here is another slide of lung tissue. What I want you to do is, is hit the pause button. Touch your screen. Use your mouse if you don't want to use your finger. Point out an alveolus or two. Point out some simple squamous epithelia. Okay. Cool. Now we are looking at another place where we find simple squamous epithelia. This right here, this slide, comes from the kidney. All right, we got to understand a little something about the kidney as we discuss this epithelium that we're going to see. You probably know already the kidney makes urine, the kidney makes pee. To make urine, it needs to filter the blood. So the kidney is always filtering blood. When the kidney filters blood, the kidney is going to... All right, where was I? So when the kidney filters the blood, it makes this precursor urine called filtrate. So your kidney is always filtering blood. Your kidney is always making this filtered fluid called filtrate. Great name, filtrate. This thing right here, this big circular mass that I put a G on, this is a ball of blood vessels called a glomerulus. Called a glomerulus. This is where blood filtration happens. You can actually see little red blood cells in here. So fluid from blood is going to go this direction. Dun, 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 into the space where that black star is. So fluid goes like this all the time. You actually have a million of these glomeruli in each kidney. Okay, so fluid is always being pushed this way. And this lumen, where the black star is, gets filled with filtrate. Okay, this round structure here, where the filtration happens, is called the glomerulus. It's a ball of blood vessels. It makes the filtrate. The filtrate ends up in the lumen where this black star is. This is where we end up getting filtrate. And we need the filtrate to not wander off. Okay, so what we do is we have a structure around this lumen that will help contain and direct the filtrate. And I can actually put a, a line on this structure. It's going right around it right there. The line covers the structure. It's not a very good line over there. This line is called the glomerular capsule. And it is made out of a super skinny epithelium, simple squamous. Look at my red arrows right here in between them. Single row of nuclei, simple, flat, 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 squamous. This is simple squamous epithelium. At some point, I want you to go back to slide number six. See if you can find a glomerulus, a glomerular capsule, and simple squamous epithelium. Okay. Awesome. Here, I want you to pause the recording. Look at this. I want you to point out a glomerulus, a glomerular capsule, lumen of the glomerular capsule, and simple squamous epithelium. Do all that. Okay. Done with simple squamous. We're moving on to a new type here, okay? 
this new type of epithelium is simple cuboidal that we're about to do. All right, we are looking at a slide from the kidney. This is the kidney again. I don't see a glomerulus at all here, but there are probably some nearby. We just don't have any in this particular view. What I do see are a bunch of tubes. Check out this tube right here. There is a tube right there. Check out this tube right here. Another tube right here. Three beautiful tubes, and then some eh, not quite as pretty tube right there, and some parts of tubes as well. These tubes are cut transversely. That's why they look like rings. All right, this black star right here, this black star is in the lumen of one of these little tubes in the kidney. And by the way, a little tube in the kidney, better known as a renal tubule. Tubule because it's a little tube, renal because it's in the kidney. So there is a lumen right there. So this is the epithelium lining that lumen. Check it out. One row, one ring row of nuclei. So it's simple. Look at the shape of these nuclei. They are basically round. They're basically round. They're right in the middle of the cell, more or less. That's another clue. So, single layer, simple, roundish nuclei, cuboidal. This renal tubule is made by simple cuboidal epithelium. Yeah. Now, recall from a moment ago, in the kidney, we're always filtering blood. When we filter blood, we, made a, we make a liquid called filtrate. We would actually find filtrate in the lumens of these renal tubules. There would be filtrate in here. And the filtrate is not yet urine. It has too many nutrients that we don't want to lose. It doesn't have enough wastes. So what these cells do, these cells will take wastes and secrete them into the filtrate. These cells will take nutrients and absorb them out of the filtrate. So this simple cuboid epithelium is doing some absorption and secretion. And in doing so, it's turning the filtrate into urine. All right. Fantastic. Another situation where I want you to pause your video, point out some renal tubules, find their lumens, find some simple cuboidal epithelium here. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. We are down to just two more epithelia that we have to do. What I'm showing you here now is the, a slide from the small intestine. I labeled the lumen for you. The lumen of the small intestine would contain something called chyme. Quick note, anytime you see a CH in anatomy class, like 99 times out of 100, that CH gets a K sound. So this is not chyme, this is chyme. All right, so in the lumen of the small intestine, the space in that tube, we would have chyme. Chyme is a mixture of the food you ate, the drink you drank, and all the digestive juices, including saliva, gastric juice from the stomach, mucus from the esophagus, pancreatic juice from the pancreas, bile from the liver. The mix of all that is called chyme. Now, the chyme is in the lumen here. The lumen is lined by this epithelium. I put a green bracket on it. Check out the fact that this epithelium basically has one row of nuclei. That means one row of cells. Well, that means what kind is it? It is simple. Now, I also want you to notice that each of these cells is basically an oval. Each of these cells is an oval. So because it's an oval, and look at the, you can just see the length of these cells. They're definitely rectangular, so this is definitely simple columnar epithelium. Nutrients from the chyme and the lumen are going to be absorbed. Wastes are going to be pushed that way, helping to turn chyme into poop. All right. That is pretty awesome. Let's move on to the next picture. 
Okay, I'm showing you two more views of the small intestine here. And I'm, I'm showing you this next picture here because it's showing me something cool. Check out again the fact that we got basically one row of nuclei here. Bum, bum, bum. Here's the lumen over there. One row of nuclei. Simple oval nuclei means it's columnar, so simple columnar epithelium. Now, there are some other cells that we're going to see in this epithelium, and we get one in this drawing here. The red arrow is on it. This guy right here, this clear-looking thing, is what is known as a goblet cell. That clear-ish thing is called a goblet cell. I don't know why I don't have goblet cell in bold here. It should be in bold. The goblet cell has one job and one job only. That job is to make mucus. Your small intestine, and your large intestine for that matter, need mucus for lubrication. Okay, so we got goblet cells. There's another one right there. We'll see a bunch of these eventually. What else do we see? I want you to notice, on this apical surface, remember apical is next to the open space, on this apical surface, dun, 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 it's kind of like pinkish and fuzzy. The fuzziness is because there are these things called microvilli. We actually zoomed in on the microvilli in the picture over here. This is, so like this right here where I put an X is this right here, okay? So it's like we're at the apical surface of that cell. And these microvilli are all these extensions, projections of the plasma membrane. So the membrane actually goes up and down and up and down and up and down with those microvilli. Microvilli means little fingers. And the purpose of this is to give us more apical surface area. That means I can have more proteins doing absorption and secretion, which are two big jobs of this epithelium. Structure is matching function here. Structure, I got microvilli, which gives me more area. More area lets me do more absorption and secretion, which are the functions. Fantastic. Okay. Pause it. I want you to find me. I'll start you out, okay? I'll start you out here, just to be nice. Here's the lumen. All right, I want you to find me simple cube columnar epithelium. I want you to find me a bunch of goblet cells. I see like one, two, three, four, five, about six goblet cells, maybe seven. And I want you to find me the pink microvilli. So find all of those, touch them on your computer screen, find them all. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Folks, we have one more epithelium to look at. It's from the trachea, the windpipe. So, I'm zoomed in here. This is the lumen of the trachea up top. Air would be in this space in you and in me. And then this green bracket is on the epithelium. This epithelium is kind of wacky looking. Like, look at these nuclei. One, two, three, four, five. Like, one, look, it looks like they're stacked but they're not. This epithelium is, is tremendously incredible. It makes you think it's stratified, but it is actually, actually simple. I know it looks like there's a lot of nuclei. Here's the thing. If I drew, I'm gonna draw some cells here. Okay, this is my rendition of, the, of this epithelium, okay? I'm going to draw like four cells here. There we go. There's my four cells. All right, my lumen would be up here. My basement membrane would be down here. Notice that all four of my cells, boom, 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 all four of them hit the basement membrane. So there's actually only one layer of cells here. 
there is different heights, and the nuclei are at different positions. So it gives the illusion of multi-layers, but it's not. It looks stratified, but it's actually simple. However, because it looks stratified, and it really does, we name this guy pseudo-stratified, so like fake stratified. And because most of the nuclei are, are ovoid or oval, we say it's pseudostratified columnar. So this is pseudostratified columnar epithelium. It looks like it's many layer, but it's actually one, so it's actually simple. I see a ton of goblet cells here too. Your trachea has goblet cells. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight goblet cells. Remember from the small intestine, goblet cells make mucus. Now, the goblet cells in the small intestine make kind of a slippery mucus for lubrication. The goblet cells in the trachea make a sticky mucus because when you breathe in, there's always stuff in the air you're breathing in. Bacteria, viruses, dust particles, pathogens, pollutants. You got to trap those things. The mucus traps them. Now, something else that's incredible. You have all these hair-like extensions. These are called cilia. They're kind of like microvilli, but cilia move. Microvilli don't move. The cilia sweep the mucus up. The cilia sweep the mucus up. And what that does is it lets you con unconsciously swallow that mucus all the time. You are always swallowing tracheal mucus. If you, I'm holding a bottle of water right here in my hand. If you think about like a normal half liter bottle of water, that's the normal amount of mucus you swallow unconsciously on a daily basis. So your trachea has goblet cells, sticky mucus, trap in particles. Cilia sweep that mucus up so you can swallow it without even thinking about it. When you swallow it, it goes down to your stomach. Stomach acid takes care of whatever nasties were in that mucus. Now, what do you think is going to damage cilia? What activity, what bad habit is going to damage cilia? If you said smoking, you are correct. Smoking damages cilia. You can't move the mucus. So smokers develop a cough. Don't smoke. Okay. Fantastic. This is good. This is good. Got another slide here. This is the last one, guys. Folks. People. Um, pause it right here. Find me the lumen. Find me the pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Find me a single goblet cell. He's a little funky looking. And find me some cilia. And by the way, if you see cilia, game over. It is pseudostratified columnar epithelium. And we're looking at trachea. There are some other organs that have cilia. But right now, for us, for our purposes, we're gonna, all we're going to know right now is if we see cilia, we are looking at the trachea. Okay, guys, fantastic. We are done with lab number three. Cool. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.